door will be open unto you. If you and I will keep on praying, trusting in our Heavenly Father, whatever the situation is, God will come through for us, even in the name of our blessed Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, today, I want us to reflect on um, a passage in Mark chapter 11, verse 20 down. Mark chapter 11, verse um, 20. It says that now in the morning, now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw a fig tree. They saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. They saw a fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Now in the morning, as they passed by, now in the morning, as Jesus Christ and his disciples were passing by, the Bible says that they saw a fig tree. They saw the fig tree, meaning that they had previously had an encounter with that fig tree. They did, the Bible didn't say they saw a fig tree. They saw their fig tree, a specific fig tree. They saw a fig tree. The fig, the fig tree had dried up from its roots. It had dried up from its roots. And Peter remembering said to him said to jesus christ that rabbi which means teacher look the fig tree which you cursed has been has withered away the fig tree which you cursed has withered away the fig tree which you cursed has withered away and I want us to go back a little bit and find out what was the encounter with that fig tree. Why did that fig tree wither away? Why did Peter remember about the fig tree? What was their previous encounter with this fig tree? That's if you read the same Mark chapter 11 verse 12. It says that now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, that's Jesus Christ and his disciples, he was hungry, Jesus Christ was hungry, and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves. So that was the first encounter. They saw this fig tree having leaves. He went to see if perhaps it would find something, he would find something on it. So Jesus Christ saw this fig tree from a distance, saw that it had leaves. So he, he thought that the fig tree was fruitful it had fruit on it so he went to find something to eat when he came to it he found nothing he found that the fig tree had deceived him from a distance the fig tree was really not what it was uh, presented itself to be it had leaves which meant that it was um, ripe it had fruit on but when they got closer the fig tree had deceived our Lord Jesus Christ he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for fix. It was not the season for fix. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Jesus Christ then said these words. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. Nobody is going to ever eat any fruit from you ever again. Because you gave me the appearance from a distance as though you were right. When I came, there was no fruit on you. And because of that deception, no one will eat any fruit from you again. Meaning that he cares that fig tree to die or to perish. And that's why when we come back to verse 20, Mark chapter 11 verse 20, that the next morning, the next day, Jesus Christ said that let no one eat of this fig tree ever again. The very time he said or said those utterances or declared those words to that fig tree, the fig tree was still standing. Nothing changed. Everything was still normal with that fig tree. So it was as though nothing had happened to that fig tree. But Jesus says that, Jesus said to that fig tree, nobody will ever eat of you anymore. 
But at that very instant, at that very, very instant, the fig tree was still standing and was very alive. But the Bible makes us to understand, verse 20, that now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up. They saw the fig tree, that that fig tree had dried up from its roots. The fig tree had died, and it has died and it had withered from its roots, meaning that there was no way it was going to ever come back again. It had died down from its roots. And Peter remembering, Peter remembered that first encounter the previous day that Jesus Christ had cursed or had made, uh, had altered words against that fig tree. And so Peter said, let's see. And Peter remembering said to him, that's Jesus Christ, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. That fig tree had withered from its roots, meaning that there was no way it was going to come back to life anymore. Peter remembering said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. And Jesus said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Beloved, I want you to know that the Bible says that life and death lies in the power of the tongue. Life and death lies in the power of the tongue. And them that love the food thereof who eat of it. Life and death lies in the power of the tongue. We have been given power by our Lord Jesus Christ that we are able to give life to things and we are at the same time able to cast things to die. The Bible says that because this fig tree deceived our Lord Jesus Christ and it wasn't fruitful, the Bible says that Jesus Christ cursed the fig tree and the Bible says that it withered, it died at its root the next day. The very time that Jesus Christ said that that fig tree will never be eaten or anybody, nobody will eat from it anymore, that fig tree was still standing. But because life and death lies in the power of the tongue, the very day that he said it, there was a power that was released from the very mouth of God because the word of God is powerful. The word of God is powerful. When you speak the word with power, it goes to work or have effect immediately. So the word of God went to the fig tree and made it die and waited. So the Bible says that the next day, the fig tree had died, had dried out from its roots. Beloved, I want you to also learn to use your tongue, your mouth, to curse anything that is not the will of God concerning your life. And today, I want you to think about that cancer, that tumor, that arthritis, that HIV, that AIDS, that diabetes, that satanic diagnosis, that has been discovered that you have a sickness or a pain in your body. I believe that this is the time, this is the opportunity for you to use your mouth to curse that sickness in the name of Jesus Christ and command that sickness to be weighted away. Command that sickness to be cast away from your body. Command that sickness to die and lose its power from your body so that you can regain health even in Jesus name Jesus Christ cursed the fig tree because it wasn't fruitful sickness doesn't make you fruitful pain doesn't make you fruitful so today I encourage you I dare you to speak the word of God into that body of yours 
and command every sickness in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit to die and to leave your body to leave your body to be cast out of your body even in Jesus name because life and death is in your mouth life and death is given to you it's in your mouth for the Bible says that in Genesis chapter 1 Bible says that and God said let there be light and there was light whatever God said God saw it whatever God said God saw whatever God said God saw if you read Genesis the creation of the earth everything that God said with his lips with his mouth he also saw because there is a creative power in the word of God whenever God said it God saw it so if you also say good things you will see good things if you curse that sickness in your body you will see healing and deliverance in your body because you are speaking the word of God and life and death is in the power of your tongue God also gave Adam the power to name everything on earth and the Bible says that whatever Adam named so was the thing when Adam saw an elephant this huge creature and he says that you are elephant that day the, that animal became elephant whatever he said it was established today God has given you that power to use your tongue to confess positive things and to use that creative power in the Word of God to change your circumstance and I'm speaking to somebody who is very sick who is at the point of dying who is languishing in pain who is going to so much suffering because of this sickness or this disease that they have diagnosed with your child with your husband with your wife or with a family member with your nephew your niece whoever that family member is it could be your mother your grandmother whoever is sick today instead of you being worried fearful afraid I want you to use your lips your very tongue right now to rebuke that sickness in the life of your your beloved your beloved brethren if it is you you have to rebuke that sickness in the name of Jesus Christ and command the sickness to die and to leave your body if it is cancer in the name of Jesus Christ I command you spirit of cancer to leave this body right now and I declare my healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ I am healed I am healed because by the stripes of Christ I am healed I was made whole because of his stripes I am healed that's all you have to do and do it out of fear rebuke command that sickness to leave your body it doesn't matter what kind of sickness it is if it's fever if it is cold if it is allergies migraine whatever sickness any pain you are going through command that pain to leave your body in the name of Jesus Christ command it to be cast out of your body and that sickness and that pain will vanish because there is creative power in the Word of God and in Jesus name every knee including every sickness will bow and will leave 